There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. Lesson 167 from A Course in Miracles There is one life, and that I share with God. There are not different kinds of life, for life is like the truth. It does not have degrees. It is the one condition in which all that God created share. Like all his thoughts, it has no opposite. There is no death because what God created shares his life. There is no death because an opposite to God does not exist. There is no death because the Father and the Son are one. In this world, There appears to be a state that is life's opposite. You call it death. Yet we have learned that the idea of death takes many forms. It is the one idea which underlies all feelings that are not supremely happy. It is the alarm to which you give response of any kind that is not perfect joy. All sorrow, loss, anxiety, and suffering and pain, even a little sigh of weariness, a slight discomfort, or the merest frown, acknowledge death, and thus deny you live. You think that death is of the body, yet it is but an idea, irrelevant to what is seen as physical. A thought is in the mind. It can be then applied as mind directs it. But its origin is where it must be changed, if change occurs. Ideas leave not their source. The emphasis this course has placed on that idea is due to its centrality in our attempts to change your mind about yourself. It is the reason you can heal. It is the cause of healing. It is why you cannot die. Its truth established you as one with God. Death is the thought that you can be separate from your Creator. It is the belief conditions change, emotions alternate, because of causes you cannot control, you did not make, and you can never change. It is the fixed belief ideas can leave their source and take on qualities the source does not contain, becoming different from their own origin, apart from it in kind as well as distance, time, and form. Death cannot come from life. Ideas remain united to their source. They can extend all that their source contains. In that, they can go far beyond themselves, but they cannot give birth to what was never given them. As they are made, so will their making be. As they were born, so will they then give birth. And where they come from, there will they return. The mind can think it sleeps, but that is all. It cannot change what is its waking state. It cannot make a body nor abide within a body. What is alien to the mind does not exist, because it has no source. For mind creates all things that are, and cannot give them attributes it lacks, nor change its own eternal, mindful state. It cannot make the physical What seems to die is but the sign of mind asleep. The opposite of life can only be another form of life. As such, it can be reconciled with what created it, 
because it is not opposite in truth. Its form may change, it may appear to be what is not. Yet mind is mind, awake or sleeping. It is not its opposite in anything created, nor in what it seems to make when it believes it sleeps. God created only mind awake. He does not sleep, and his creations cannot share what he gives not, nor make conditions which he does not share with them. The thought of death is not the opposite to thoughts of life. Forever unopposed by opposites of any kind, the thoughts of God remain forever changeless, with the power to extend forever changelessly, but yet within themselves, for they are everywhere. What seems to be the opposite of life is merely sleeping. When the mind elects to be what it is not, and to assume an alien power which it does not have, a foreign state it cannot enter, or a false condition not within its source, it merely seems to go to sleep a while. It dreams of time, an interval in which what seems to happen never has occurred. The changes wrought are substanceless, and all events are nowhere. When the mind awakes, it but continues as it always was. Let us today be children of the truth and not deny our holy heritage. Our life is not as we imagined it. Who changes life because he shuts his eyes, or makes himself what he is not because he sleeps, and sees and dreams an opposite to what he is? We will not ask for death in any form today, nor will we let imagined opposites to life abide even an instant where the thought of life eternal has been set by God himself. His holy home we strive to keep today as we, he established it and wills it be forever and ever. He is Lord of what we think today and in his thoughts, which have no opposite, we understand there is one life and that we share with him, with all creation, with their thoughts as well, whom he created in a unity of life that cannot separate in death and leave the source of life from where it came. We share one life because we have one source, a source from which perfection comes to us, remaining always in the holy minds which he created perfect. As we were, so are we now and will forever be. A sleeping mind must waken as it sees its own perfection mirroring the Lord of life so perfectly it fades into what is reflected there. And now it is no more a mirror reflection. It becomes the thing reflected and the light which makes reflection possible. No vision now is needed. For the wakened mind is one that knows its source, its self, its holiness. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. There is one life, and that I share with God. And now for the reflection on lesson 167. There is one life, and I share it with God. 
There is only one extension of the love and the loveliness of God. And it is for you to claim that, to say, I am that now. Not to look around and say, what, what about that person or what about the other? It is for me to claim it right now, knowing that as I claim it truly, it is claimed for all because there is one life and that I share with God. So I can't wait for you to do it or for someone else. I am that. Now, I must be the one to claim this one life, to claim to be the extension of the love and the loveliness of God, to claim to be the Christ, to claim to be the Savior. And within that comes a power to me that allows me to bring all things of time to completion. And Jesus, until then, helps us to realize that everything else is but a dream, that there is nothing else really happening. He says in this lesson, what seems to be the opposite of life is merely sleeping. And a sleeping mind can make up whatever world they want, but they cannot make that world real. He goes on to say, it dreams of time, an interval in which what seems to happen never has occurred. The changes wrought are substanceless, and all events are nowhere. When the mind awakes, it but continues as it always was. Just like when you wake up in the morning and you look around and you realize you're safe in your room, safe in your home, so will you be when you awaken from this dream of separation, realizing that divinity always held you, that you were always protected by grace. In fact, there was nothing that you could ever do within this dream that could harm you in any way. And we feel gratitude for that, for that gratitude allows us to waken even quicker We lay aside all the dreams of time and we come with holy empty hands unto God and we say, it is done. The dream at last is done.